Over the years, I've tried my fair share of different techniques when it comes to street photography. Shooting with wide angle lenses, long lenses, double exposures and motion blur, medium format photography, and even virtual street photography. But there's one thing I've never done, and I've honestly been avoiding it all of this time, and that's flash photography. Flash photography is bold. It's unapologetic in a lot of ways, but it's powerful in its own right. It's why a lot of documentary street photographers swear by it, but also why a lot of people reprimand it. Personally, I'm not really against using a flash. I think it can achieve a very distinct look if that's what you're after. But personally, I've never felt like I needed a flash in my work. You know, it doesn't really fit my whole approach of trying to be as discreet as possible. And when you use a flash, you're making your presence known. So why use a flash? I think there's probably two reasons, two main reasons. One, to create consistent lighting in every photo. It means one less thing for you to really worry about. And it lets you put more of your focus to what's happening around you. And then there's the look that the flash creates in a photo. It's a very distinct look, but it does a very good job at bringing out the details in the shadows. It can also create this surreal dramatic look to a photo. Apply that to a photo that's already dramatic on its own. Maybe it's a subject's facial expression, or maybe an already surreal type of scene, and you add a flash element to that photo, that can create a very eye-catching image. So right here I have Max Sturgeon's second book of A Different Stripe. Max Sturgeon is an American photographer and filmmaker, and in here consists his work documenting the streets of India. I'm showing his work in this video because his work primarily uses a flash. I just want to see how he uses it in his photos, and also get a little inspiration for when I attempt to try this out myself. Also, thank you to iShot Publisher for sending this book out to me, and for being today's sponsor. I'll talk a bit more about them later on in the video. So one of the things I've noticed right off the bat here is that in a lot of his photos, he's using a flash in broad daylight. That might seem a little funny to use a flash during the day, but it can still be pretty effective at bringing out the shadow details. And it seems to really work in these daytime photos he's making because he always has a human subject in his photos where you can visibly see their faces. I also think the, the use of the flash during the day here is, um, it's actually a lot more subtle than when he uses it at night. Uh, it's not as obvious. This photo right here is a great example of what I mean by taking a already surreal kind of moment, then you implement that dramatic look that the flash creates, and it just takes this image to a whole different level. The flash here worked perfect in getting all that shadow detail in this guy's face. If you didn't use the flash here, you probably wouldn't see all the emotion and the details in his eyes. It would just have been too dark because of, you know, obviously he's got a night crate on his head. I really like how he gets a bit more creative with his night flash photos. You get a lot more negative space when you shoot with the flash at night. You're basically isolating the subject from the background. But when you use the flash at night, you also get these weird elements. I'm assuming at times he's using a slower shutter speed, so he's creating this motion blur. But he's clearly embracing all of that in these photos, um, and I think that's what's making it successful. All right, so I'm out in the city, kind of near uh, South Station um, in Boston, obviously. Uh, it's starting to get pretty dark out now. Um, not really, I don't think sunset has happened yet, uh, probably in 10 minutes. So I think it's dark enough that I can start shooting with the flash and get somewhat of a effect happening in the photos. We'll see, I think I'm just gonna experiment right now. So let's go. So I'm using the Ricoh GR3X and this wireless flash uh, from Lightpix. It's called the Flash Q. Uh, it's a pretty compact flash, and you know the fact that it's wireless is pretty nice. It took a while to actually get it to work, but uh, still a pretty cool little flash. So I am shooting at 180th of a second, f4 at 800 ISO, and the flash is set to. The flash is set to 132nd. I'm so bad with these kind of settings. I'm just gonna play around with it. I have the advantage that I'm shooting digital, so you know I can just look at the photos and see if it's you know coming out the way I want it to. I think it's uh, I think it's gonna be fun. Actually, you see those chairs right there? I'm gonna try taking a photo of it. Start with some still life. Okay, 
looks kind of weird. <laughs> Let me just say right off the bat here, this was pretty challenging. Here in the start, I kind of messed around with still life at first. I just needed to get familiar with using the flash, uh, making sure the settings of the Rico were syncing with the flash, which took a bit of time. I don't think it was anything wrong about the particular flash unit I was using. I just really had no clue what I was doing at first. There was this pretty cool looking mural that was in progress. Um, so I ended up walking up to that and experiment with a few shots. I actually kind of like this shot here. I think there's a bit of that surreal element uh, in this photo just because of, you know, the scale of this mural in the picture. I'm not really sure what this is gonna turn out to be, but um, the flash is definitely present in this photo. And I kind of like that green text here on the crane. Now, I'll be honest, it was a bit nerve wracking thinking of using a flash on a human subject. You know, I, I didn't want to just take a, a photo of a random stranger with a flash for the sake of just getting, you know, pictures for this video. There needed to be a, a reason to take the photo, but I didn't really come across anything like that for a while. Um, I think that was because of the area I was in. There just wasn't a lot of people roaming about, um, but Slowly, I started to make my way towards busier parts of town, and I could finally start to implement people in my photos. Although not so great, still trying to figure out the settings. Um, I found that my GR was still trying to focus because I had shutter AF enabled, so I turned that off and switched to back button focus. Um, that way I could just lock focus, basically shoot in manual focus with the GR. Once I did this, I was starting to get a lot more consistent results and I could put more of my attention to getting a bit more creative. Like we saw in Max Sturgeon's images, uh, specifically those night photos with the flash, um, he was embracing those weird little elements that were coming up from the light. That's something I wanted to add into the photos intentionally and I started to do that when I saw this pretty cool reflection of the Paramount Theater. Once I started to implement this motion blur, um, sort of added this whole second element to the photos I was taking, I think that's when the fun really started. Eventually I ended up in this area where there were a lot of people. I think a show had just ended at one of the theaters, so a ton of people were out in the streets. And I saw that people were about across the street and I took advantage of that. All right, I don't think that turned out to be a major failure as I thought it was sort of heading towards. Um, I think the second I started using motion blur, kind of incorporating that into the photos, I had a lot more fun. And I think, actually, I think I see a photo, a potential photo I wanna take right here. So now nearing the end of the night, I ended up getting this shot that I really feel like um, has that surreal element to it. You have the effect of the flash lighting up this sign in the background, the slow shutter, and the way the steam from the road is captured. You know, at first I thought a human subject walking in here would really make this even better, but you know, at the same time, I think the absence of people in this shot adds to that surreal feeling. Overall, I feel like this experience ended up being a lot more positive than I initially thought it would end up being. I think it was pretty cool to shoot digital and still have no idea how the photo was gonna come out. I also like how using something that I'm not very used to 
um, led to a lot of experimentation, which is always a great thing. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, before we wrap up, I do want to talk a little bit about iShot Publisher. They're an independent publisher based out of Italy, and they work specifically with street and documentary photographers worldwide. I've shown some of their books in previous videos, specifically one I talked about the importance of photography books and why we should continue to invest in them and basically keep this art form alive. And I say art form because it's sort of an art form in itself, producing books like this. And iShot does a really great job designing their books and using the highest quality of materials. All of their books are released as limited editions, and every single one are numbered and autographed by the photographer. This here that I showed you was the white edition of Max Sturgeon's Of a Different Stripe. This book is one of their newest releases. Now amongst their books and magazines that they also make, uh, iShot is actually starting to dip their toes into the NFT world. You know, I always looked at NFTs as a, I don't know, a, a threat to you know physical, tangible books. Um, but iShot believes in a world that the two can coexist. The first one-of-one one NFT collection, Humans, is available on Foundation, and every piece includes a physical fine art print signed by the author. You can check out iShot's collection of books and NFT art on their website, which I'll have linked in the description below. All right, guys, thanks for watching and tuning in today. Um, I'll see you all next week. All right, peace.